In traditional geometry, the surface is one-dimensional and planar. Spherical geometry, though, takes place on the surface of a sphere and is thus two-dimensional. While spherical geometry is a complex topic, we're here today to explain to you some of the basics. In spherical geometry, it is best to imagine a flat plane is intersecting a sphere in space, creating a circle in the sphere. The circle of intersection will be largest when the plane passes through the center of the sphere. This is referred to as a great circle. A great circle is the largest possible circle that can be drawn around the sphere. It occurs when we draw any lines around the sphere passing through both poles. All parallels of longitude are great circles, as is the equator. The shortest distance between two points on a sphere is along the arc of the great circle. So you can consider great circles as replacement for lines. Except for the equator, other circles that are perpendicular to the axis of the sphere are called small circles. They will have a radius smaller than a great circle. A spherical triangle is defined just as a planar triangle for the most part. It consists of three points, three sides, and the area enclosed within. The arcs of the three great circles that join the points are called the sides. To find the length of a side in a spherical triangle, you find the measure of its opposite angle. This might seem weird because it means that sides are measured in degrees or radians. While you might have been taught that the sum of angles in a triangle cannot exceed 180 degrees, spherical triangles can have 390 degree angles, as shown in the picture above. The angles can exceed 180 degrees because while traditional geometry takes place on a plane with zero curvature, Spheres have a positive curvature, or the surface curves outwards. Just as in traditional geometry, there are a few formulas we can use. Most useful and commonly used is the cosine formula. As the Earth is a sphere, there are many practical applications of spherical geometry. Great circles and small circles on the surface of the Earth are used to locate points. Any location on a map or globe can be given a pair of coordinates. The first is a parallel of latitude that it lies on, and the second is the meridian of longitude. The angular distance either north or south of the equator is the latitude. To find the latitude, you simply find the angle the location creates with the center of the Earth, and whether it is north or south of the equator. The maximum latitude for any point on Earth is 90 degrees north or south with the equator being used as a reference point at zero degrees. Longitude is determined in a similar fashion, except the Greenwich Meridian is the line of reference. Meridians of longitude locate all the places on Earth. A meridian of longitude is half a great circle. To find the longitude, you must calculate the angle between it and the Greenwich Meridian, and whether it is east or west of it. As the Earth rotates, different parts of the globe experience day and night. To account for this, the Earth is divided into time zones based on meridians of longitude. Time zones are stated in terms of the number of hours they are ahead or behind Greenwich. While all places with longitudes west of Greenwich are, be are behind mean time, all places with longitudes east are ahead. For every 15 degrees, a new time zone occurs. The meridian of longitude opposite Greenwich is the International Date Line, located at 100 degrees east or west. It is 12 hours ahead or behind Greenwich. Therefore, the day changes on either side of this International Date Line.